Hello. Well, yeah. <laughs> Welcome uh, with my talk about uh, the uh, uh, new possibilities in online editing of uh, open document. And I edit interoperability. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to give a, a nice overview of the things that have been developed over the past uh, year, roughly. So all the uh, new features that have been added by a lot of developers, hard-working people uh, to, uh, to give uh, the new platform, the new working... Yes. This works. About me, a lot of things. On the right is the inter uh, interesting thing, my private life, which is busy. On the left, the business thing, which is... Uh, Interesting too with open office, libre office since 2004, all kind of voluntary stuff and an own company. And since 2090, last year, part time, helping Collabora with marketing. And it also has to do with how the things change uh, in, in marketplace. My, my business mostly is uh, helping with, with training, with desktop stuff. And since we see that the uh, the, the world, people move to online work uh, that has influence on my activity as well. Which button? So, uh, I, I, I have some sections, general, writer, uh, te text files, spreadsheets, and, and just mentioning all nice uh, features. Of course, this is not really new, but it has been improved, is about tracking changes, commenting, uh, handling comments that has been nicely improved in in uh, in in the LibreOffice Collabora online. The next thing that's uh, the, the formatting of of bullets. Uh, it it has been uh, made possible to get a lot of dialogues uh, visible, and so that gives all kind of features that are available in desktop, uh, also available in online. Uh, another thing that has been realized, and this is one of the examples that I'm going to show, uh, it, it's, it's the sidebar, uh, which uh, in, in uh, LibreOffice desktop and also in online has an enormous amount of uh, settings um, that you can do. Uh, so, so in this in this case, uh, it, it's, an, uh, uh, it's a shape that is selected and you have the colors and you have also a custom color picker uh, that is available in online nowadays. User interface, uh, it has nice new cleaner toolbars. Another thing, talking about uh, online and document editing, uh, of course, we prefer to work with uh, open document, but um, quite often we have to do with Microsoft Often Files. Uh, and this is an example of a, a Microsoft Office file that's just loaded in, in uh, Collabora Online, and you can do a save as, and you can save it as... Uh, an open document file and you see if you load that same file it just looks similar apart from the fact that uh, in this case there's a table selected etc but it, it just works so it, 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 it our tooling also is, is a bridge between the, the open standard and the Microsoft file format sort of uh, next thing that has been nicely improved uh, is, is easier is the handling of images, uh, shapes that are selected online. You can easily turn them. You see when you start to turn them, it indicates how, it, how the result is. And uh, on the right, indeed, there is how it works then. The next um, section uh, is... Uh, a bunch of items that has been improved in working with text files. Tables. Um, 
if a table is activated, you see the markers for the rows and the columns. You can drag them. It's, it's easy to work with. And on, on the left of the screen, you see uh, the sidebar that also has a section for tables uh, where you can work with rows and columns and things like that. Are, are there people here that work with tables in online documents now and then? Sorry? Tried you tried and you failed or the software failed? Uh, <laughs> oh, that's exceptional. <laughs> okay, but uh, it was uh, the thing you tried was, was really complicated or it, it was an early version or maybe? I think the overestimate my talents. It wasn't complicated. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. The, it, it's it's in, in, interesting uh, now now that we talk about this. You, you see, uh, uh, there's an, and this is just a part that I've told and shown. There's an enormous amount of, of possibilities that people get online, and and this uh, this application is also the base for uh, the iOS uh, version of of Calabra and the new Android version. Um, so there's a ton of possibilities that are being added and that are useful to have. But I, I think when you have uh, s some speech work to do with huge documents, etc., the preferred platform, in any case for me, still is this one, eh? just for being able to work faster. But still, it's great that when working together, you can handle tables. Um, and, oh yeah, there you see the... Uh, the various handles indicated. Table of contents. Um, if there is a table of content, you can do a refresh so that it gets updated, but you can also do the setting. So adding the styles, adding extra lines, things like that. It's available online. Another interesting thing is uh, text files often have sections that are that can be locked, that can be protected by passwords. Uh, in this case, I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's an, uh, a docx file, a Microsoft X file, where, where you uh, uh, can add a protected section. And Oh, welcome with your bicycle. And, and, and you can... Uh, and, and you can simply handle these protected uh, uh, things uh, that are available in the open document format and that are available in the Microsoft uh, Office format. You can handle them in uh, LibreOffice Collabora online. And uh, so that means a, a great compatibility. There are applications out there that uh, uh, are uh, saying they're extremely compatible but basic stuff like protection and section, uh, it, it's, it doesn't exist there. But it is handled here. Another nice thing is uh, the watermark, and also here you see the availability of a dialogue, uh, all kind of settings, uh, so that you can tweak it to your needs. The next thing is about spreadsheets, uh, which are often used, uh, also here, cell protection. Uh, if you try to uh, change something that's protected, it will just fail and you will get notified. Uh, data validation. Uh, most people know it anyway, those people working with spreadsheet. Online, it's just available. And if you try things to do that are not allowed, again, you will be notified. Then page formatting of a spreadsheet, it, it can be tedious. There can be a lot of things that are uh, uh, needed to set. So general things, but also uh, headers, footers, and as a last thing, how it is... Uh, uh, scaled, for example, when you do an export as PDF, things 
you can do it as if it is on the desktop. Then the conditional formatting, for example, uh, this already is a bit longer existing, maybe it has been extended, but in, in the toolbar you can choose uh, uh, various conditional formatting formats. Uh, they will be applied to the uh, selection in the spreadsheet. Um, I make a little sidestep. Uh, paste special in spreadsheets, uh, and that's nothing new, that's there already for a long time, also allows you to do some uh, special actions. For example, uh, the number 30 here is, has been copied and you do a paste special over the selection and you can choose to subscribe, uh, subtract, excuse me. And so uh, in also online, uh, the numbers will be changed. And then if you do conditional formatting in this example with data bars, you see that the, uh, the possibilities are all available. Quite new in the spreadsheet is that you can now zoom uh, somewhere between 60 and 100 or 200 percent, 180, 200 percent. That's uh, much more convenient. And in spreadsheet, uh, the grouping of rows and columns to collapse stuff, it's interesting. It's it, uh, still wishes out there, for example, to freeze the first row in, in spreadsheet online. That's still on, on the wish list. So uh, we're not, almost, not fully there, but uh, editing of charts, it's uh, available both in the, in the sidebar on the right. You see you can set properties, but you can also launch the dialogues to do various things. And the last thing for the spreadsheet is the formula editor, similar to as available on the desktop, but it allows you to choose uh, formulas. It allows you to look into the structure, find errors, um, combine uh, functions, etc. The next thing is what we are doing here. It's about uh, presentations. Master slides. People here that work with presentations now and then, that know the use of master slides. Yeah. Okay. Uh, master slide is, is basically a sort of uh, uh, page style in in, in the presentation and if you change a master slide and the master slide also holds the, the formatting of, of the bullet lists for example and if you change a master slide all the slides that uh, have it applied will show the new formatting. Now it's extremely convenient of course when you work online and that you also can use this functionality there. Also new is that in the side pane on the left, you can move, you can drag slides to a new position. So where, where initially, uh, I think two years ago, a bit longer, when you gave presentations online, you had availability to, to show them, which is good, which is still there, and they show the, the, the slides, um, the slide transitions, for example, but that was mostly it. Yeah, you could do some text and some shaping, but now you have really the options to do a lot of formatting and working on your presentation. Uh, this is another thing: header and footer. And a last or nearly last thing is uh, editing, of course, in the sidebar of uh, charts, for example, and of shapes. 
and this is a nice thing with uh, LibreOffice project photo and a picture of uh, Collabora uh, team. And this, uh, th this, this are mostly the features that I get at. They come in LibreOffice uh, code almost by itself, but not really. Uh, so it's always good to tell people how they can participate. Uh, what I understood from the presentation from Simon before here, and it, it's quite clear, it's always important for the for the health of open source software that there is uh, that there is money available for people who can uh, maintain it, extend it, improve it, whatever. So. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is that uh, people can just uh, volunteer and uh, look what they uh, want to work on and where they can contribute. Uh, but on the collabora.office uh, uh, website, there's a special page that explains how it works with, uh, with code, LibreOffice Online, Collabora Online snapshots, where you can test uh, and... Um, I, I really uh, want to encourage people to take a look and see what is in it for themselves. Uh, what we also encourage is that uh, organizations, especially the large organizations that make use of the tooling, find some partner or some, some way to uh, pay a little money for the use that they make so that uh, the people that work on the project also can have... Uh, their salary that they need and it helps to the project of course to be healthy and to be s sustainable and I have some URLs here about uh, Collabora Online about code to participate and see get free desktop to work at uh, LibreOffice there are all the code uh, is available as well. Thanks for your attention. Any questions, maybe? Suggestions? Yes, please. So how is the Collabora office doing in the Netherlands? Are you, is there any big government or is the, the private institutions running it? Um, Yeah, that, 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 I, I know there are uh, various large organizations that use either Libra or Collabra. Um, so but it's a mixed environment. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, if, if you uh, if you look at at Collabra Office and Libra Office, um, the most difference is the, the service you get, and that it's longer available, that you get special support, and if, if there are special patches and features, you will get them first as a customer. Uh, but in the end, uh, in, in LibreOffice, in, in a different schedule uh, and without the support, but all code that is in Collabora is in LibreOffice as well. Yeah? You can actually compare to Red Hat and ZOS. Mm, I, I think that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I don't know exactly their schedule, but roughly you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And and yes, it, for the Netherlands, it, uh, I worked there um, in in this environment about 16 years now already. And uh, but it doesn't mean that I know everything that's ongoing. Still, you happen to talk with people f either private or for a company, and you learn that they use it already for five years or whatever. <laughs> How can you notice? It's, it's, it, it's also freedom in the sense that people don't have to tell you when they download something and use it. Yeah? Okay? Okay. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you use the Collabra uh, in your own environment or do you have to use your service? Uh, no, no, yeah, there is, uh, for example, a uh, code that you can install with a Docker image mm -hmm. and you can install it and it's free to use up until. 20 users and then there's a then there's a, a message okay you're using something that's for free but yeah. it's not supposed to be used in larger environments 
just for the uh, uh, etc. Okay. Yeah. Anything that I missed? Okay. Thank you.